my god, it's full of stars. Today we are probably more aware than ever before on a scientific level of the relationship between what we term consciousness and body. Now, of course, to the scientists, for the most part, consciousness is still a physical term. Mind is only a condition of matter. And in this uh, thinking, we cannot entirely escape into the freer atmosphere of larger thinking. Still, however, we do have a new perspective. And that is the perspective of a person in a body. And we begin to realize that in some way, this person must operate through the body which it inhabits. Therefore, all areas which may have a bearing upon this are becoming increasingly important to our thinking. The great French scientist, whom we refer to in our book, philosopher scientist René Descartes, was one of the first to express a series of rather, rather noble thoughts uh, bearing upon the relationship between consciousness and body. He declared that the anima or soul certainly uh, operated through the whole body, through all of its substances, its organs, its propensities and its functions. But although this could be rather immediately accepted by the thoughtful, there was another more advanced question. If this operation was general throughout the body, there must be a controlling or directing center. Functions of all kinds arise from certain basic energy poles or fields within the body. Therefore, if the body is all responsive to soul, then there is this implication that there must also be a particular part of the body which is most particularly sensitive to soul. That there must be a headquarters so to say, for this vast field operation. And it was Descartes' opinion that the pineal gland in the brain was this controlling center. He held this after a great deal of thought and consideration. He studied all of the principal centers of the body, the organs, the nervous system, the arterial system, and he finally concluded that the larger and more massive structures could not be the controllers, but rather were the large reservoirs through which these controllers operated. That in all probability, the controlling power would be posited in a comparatively small and sensitive area. Just as, for example, the very fact that man is alive is due to a very small and important area at the apex of the left ventricle of the heart. Uh, the area involved is probably not much more than the size of a small bee. Yet this is a controller, a very important dynamic. And if anything happens to this one controller, the rest of the body uh, ceases to function. Descartes, uh, continuing his analysis, came to the conclusion that in the brain there was an unpaired organ, that instead of the uh, organ being polarized or with two essential parts corresponding to the right and left sides of the brain, that was suspended almost in the middle of the brain suspended in a manner in which it was capable of motion within the brain itself. A comparatively small and mysterious body, uh, which uh, resembled perhaps a small pine cone. 
and that this mysterious body with an independent motion held in position only by certain arteries and veins and nerves was in his mind the most likely organ or center by means of which consciousness was able to impinge itself upon the body as a living structure. Therefore, that life came essentially from the heart. But from this other center came the power which transforms a living thing into a thinking, conscious being.